This is how to find the epicenter of an earthquake. To do that, you need your data, you need your seismographs, and the seismographs look like this. You need a map to plot your data on, and you need the P and the S wave arrival time chart from the Earth Science Reference Table. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out when the P and the S waves arrived at the seismic station. Because remember, P waves are faster and always arrive first. The S waves are slower and arrive second. I've already figured out the bottom two stations, KMVO and GUMO. Now I'm going to figure out the top station, ICLSA. So the first thing we have to do is find out what time the P waves and the S waves arrived at that station. So we're going to look at the seismographs for the station ICLSA. Here's the seismograph, and it has been marked on the seismograph what time the P waves arrived and what time the S waves arrived. So the first thing you have to do is read the P wave arrival time. For this one, the P wave arrived at 1 hour, 4 minutes, and 30 seconds. So I'm going to go back to the front page, and in my data chart, I'm going to write that the P wave arrived at 1 hour, 4 minutes, and 30 seconds. Now I have to figure out what time the S wave arrived at that same seismic station. So I go back to my seismograph and I look at the S wave arrival time. The S wave arrived at one hour, nine minutes, and 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go back to my chart and write my data in. One hour, nine minutes, and 10 seconds. In order to find the distance to the epicenter of an earthquake, you have to know the time difference between when a P wave arrives and when an S wave arrives at the seismic station. That time difference is going to allow you to find the distance to the epicenter. So the P wave arrived at one hour, four minutes and 30 seconds. The S wave at one hour, nine minutes and 10 seconds, making the time difference between them four minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to write four minutes and 30 seconds. Sometimes it's difficult to figure out differences in time. So I find one of the best ways to do that is to use your fingers. So for this one, since I'm going from four minutes and 30 seconds to nine minutes and 10 seconds, using my fingers, I would go five minutes and 30 seconds, six minutes and 30 seconds, seven minutes and 30 seconds, eight minutes and 30 seconds. And then it's 40 more seconds to get to nine minutes and 10 seconds. So four hours and oops, not 30 seconds, four hours and 40 seconds. So it's good that I checked myself so that I could correct this to four minutes and 40 seconds. Now I need to find the distance to the epicenter of the earthquake. In order to find the distance to the epicenter, the only data that's important is this data, the time difference between the P and the S waves. I don't need to know their arrival times if I figured out the time difference. So I know that for this station, the P wave and the S wave are four minutes and 40 seconds apart from each other. So now I'll use this chart in order to figure out how far away the earthquake was when the P and the S waves were four minutes and 40 seconds apart, there are a couple of steps I have to do. The first thing you need is a piece of scrap paper and you can use any scrap paper you have available. I'm going to use the back of my lab. What you do is you take your scrap paper and you line it up along the time axis of this graph. There are two axes. The bottom one is the epicenter distance. The epicenter distance is measured in thousands of kilometers. 
So this means 1,000 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers, and so on. The lines in between are units of 200 kilometers. So this is 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, etc. The y-axis is time in seconds. Starting at zero, it goes in 20 second intervals. 20 seconds, 40 seconds, one minute. One minute, 20 seconds, one minute, 40 seconds, two minutes. Right now I'm trying to find out how far away an earthquake was if the P and the S waves were four minutes and 40 seconds apart. So I'm going to take my scrap paper, put it against the time axes, keeping it as straight as I can. I'm going to mark off zero minutes, and then I'm going to find four minutes and 40 seconds. So here's four minutes. The first line is 420, so the second line is 4 minutes and 40 seconds. It's a good idea to label the two lines that you've made so that you don't get confused later on. After I've marked this off, this represents the distance on my graph for 4 minutes and 40 seconds of time. What I'm going to do is take this piece of paper and slide it along until the two marks that I've made line up with the line for the P wave arrival and the line for the S wave arrival. So when the distance between the P and the S waves are 4 minutes and 40 seconds, then I can figure out how far it was to the earthquake. So I slide my paper along, keeping it as straight as possible, until the two marks that I've made line up with the P and the S wave lines. So I would say right about there is where my two marks line up with the line for the P waves and the line for the S waves. Now I just look at the bottom and I figure out what my distance to the epicenter is. Right here, the distance is 3,200 kilometers. So when the P and the S waves are 4 minutes and 40 seconds apart, the distance to the epicenter is 3,200 kilometers. So now in my data chart, I'm going to write 3,200 kilometers. I did the same thing for the other two stations in my chart using their seismographs. Remember that you need data from at least three stations in order to figure out the epicenter of an earthquake. Now that I've calculated all my data, I'm going to plot this on a map of the area so I can pinpoint my epicenter. The earthquake was 3,200 kilometers from the station called ICLSA. Now I have to turn to my map, and I've already plotted the points for the other two seismic stations on the map. Now I'm going to plot ICLSA. Since I know that the earthquake was 3,200 kilometers away from that point, what I have to do is take my safety compass and hold it up to the map scale on the bottom of the page. This part of the compass slides back and forth. So keeping the points, which is this part over here, on zero, I slide the, the, this piece over here back and forth until one of the holes lines up with 3,200 kilometers. So, right there, the first hole is on 3,200 kilometers. Then I tighten this blue knob. Sorry, it's hard to do with one hand. You should use two on the regions. I tighten the blue knob until I get to 3,200 kilometers. So right there, trying to hold it as still as I can, I have my safety compass lined up at 3,200 kilometers. This data was for the station called ICLSA. So now I'm going to take the point of my safety compass, which is the end, 
and put it on that station, ICLSA. Taking my pen, I'm going to keep one finger over here and put the pen in the hole that lines up with ICLSA. I'm going to draw my circle and I end up with a picture that looks like that. At the point where the three circles meet, that is the epicenter of my earthquake. That is how you find the epicenter of an earthquake. You find out the P wave and the S wave arrival time for each station and you need at least three. You find the time difference between them when the P wave arrived and the S wave arrived. Calculate the distance to the epicenter using the chart in your reference table. And then you plot your data on the map using a safety compass and the map scale. Remember, you're going to have three different circles on your map. The circles do not have to be complete. They can only go on the map if that's all that fits. And the point where the three circles meet is the epicenter of the earthquake. If you draw your three circles and they don't meet up exactly, your epicenter is the point closest to where the three circles would meet.